say uh, thank you all for having me today. Really excited to be here, and I want to say thank you to your boss sitting there in the back. It's just a great privilege to be here. Uh, we all know where we're at, the Los Angeles Communication Center, and you all are the top dispatch team in the entire country. Yeah. And that's such a privilege for me to be here today. <laughs> today, I'm here to ask you one question. That's the entire reason I'm here. Is this familiar to anyone? A phone call? And I think when I get a phone call, especially if it's from a random number, there's a couple things going through my head. One is who is calling and why are they calling? Today we're going to get into each of those questions. And I want to ask you all today, will you answer the call? So let's start at the beginning. Who is calling? We see Jesus Christ is calling. Some of you here today are like, Landon, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the Son of God, part of the divine trinity, three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What did he do? He was sent from God down to earth. We're going we're to answer a couple questions for everyone today. We're going to clear everything up and get back to the main question. We see who Jesus is. Why did Jesus come? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, down to this earth so that we would not perish. Why were we going to perish? The simple answer to that is sin. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm not perfect. I know what your view of me is. I don't care if I'm wearing a button-up shirt, wearing just normal pants, and y'all are wearing a uniform or whatnot. I'm a sinner just like you are. Everyone on this entire earth that's ever been in existence is a sinner. And what is sin, you might ask? Obviously, a broad definition, you might be thinking, oh, maybe it's murder. If someone kills someone, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a sin, right? If someone steals something, pretty sure that's a sin. Sin is anything that separates us from God. And that sin is an eternal separation. For the wages of sin is death. We all get a paycheck, okay? We understand maybe what wages are. It's a payment for what we've done. The payment for what we've done, the payment for our sin, is eternal separation from God. And there is absolutely nothing that we can do that can bridge that gap. We're hopelessly lost in need of a savior. That's why we can't save ourselves. We're hopelessly lost, bound on our way to hell. But there is, a good, <laughs> there is a good answer to all of this. There is good news. And that's what we're getting in today. We saw that God sent his son to this earth to die on the cross. That cross, you might see it. Someone wears like a chain on their neck or something. You see a cross. You don't really know what it means. That cross symbolizes what God did for us. He sent his son, died on the cross, paid a payment that we can never in a million years pay on our own. By paying that payment, he gave us a free gift. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but, but, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is the gift of God, you ask? It's through Jesus Christ, and the gift of God is the cross, the substitutionary payment that Jesus paid for on that cross for each of us. And there's one simple solution for the consequence of our sin here today. And we see that the Bible says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus isn't just buried in a tomb, folks. Jesus died, was buried for three days, and rose again. I believe and I serve a risen Savior. And that's each of you all's opportunity today. You might have never even heard this today, but there's a call. And you have the opportunity to answer that call or to decline that call. And this is a call that's not about anyone else out there. Usually, you're out there, someone's life is on the line. Today, this call, your life is on the line. Two of the main reasons that 
many people, they kind of shudder, and they don't want to answer this call, and I know this was true in my own life with my personal testimony. Pride and fear of man. Pride is a sin, and it took a lot for me growing up in a Christian home, going through the motions, to get over my pride, went to do everything my way, hoping I could do enough good to save myself. I had to get over that and give it to God. The second is the fear of man, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges that might be in this room right here. You're with coworkers. There might be someone in here that even is saved. You're a little fearful about it. You haven't witnessed. You haven't shared that gospel with your coworkers. And there's those of you that are lost, and you're scared. What is my wife going to think? What is my 17-year-old son in high school going to think when I get home and tell him that I just got saved? I'm 45 years old. He's going to think I'm crazy. I've never, ever lived in a way that would be pleasing to God. Why would my son respect me? At the end of the day, your family aside, your pride aside, this world aside, it's you at the judgment seat of Christ. And no one else can speak for you. No one else can do anything for you. It's you and God. And he's offering you that free gift of salvation today. It's yours to receive it or not. On October 16th, 2020, there was a local dispatcher. His name was Ken Costle. And Ken got a call from a father who was super shaken up, super terrified and worried. His one-year-old son had stopped breathing, and he was getting to the point of death. He was not going to make it. And Ken calmly and collectively was able to talk to that father, guide him through, and his first instinct was CPR. And that father shaken up, if you can imagine with me being that father with your one-year-old baby boy. And he's on the brink of death. He was able to collect his thoughts, perform CPR on that child. And Ken was able to lead that father as he performed CPR on him, and that child's life was saved. That baby boy's life was saved because someone answered a call. Are you going to answer that call today? As I said before, we need to get this through our minds. This is your life on the line. This is your eternity. We all know deep down there's something after this life. It doesn't just disappear. There's heaven and there's hell. And there's hope that you don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven and be with Christ. Mm -hmm. I was reading this story online a few weeks ago. And there's two statements by Ken that really stood out to me. The first one was, I can't help but put myself in the, col in the collar shoes. I ask you all today, have you put yourself in God's shoes? He did everything for you. He sent his only begotten son to die in your place for your sins. And he's offering you a free gift. He's not asking you to do anything, no good works, nothing like that. He's offering you that free gift. Are you going to accept it? Ken also said, a lot of people wait to call. Don't wait. Don't wait. I beg of all of you today, I'm not trying to scare you and say that you're going to die on your way home today, that's not what I'm saying at all, but you as well as anyone in a dispatch team would know there's life and death, and it gets real. I know people's lives have been lost over that phone. I know there's stories that you don't want to tell anyone. Sometimes people make it, sometimes they don't. And at the end of the day, each of us come to a point in time where this life is over. It's but a vapor. The Bible says it appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. Just like that, your life can be over. You might not get another call. What are you going to do with the call today? I urge you to answer that call. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Please bow your head and close your eyes. How many here today in this room before your shift starts in a few hours would say, Landon, I want to accept God's call today. I want to answer that call and accept his free gift of salvation. If that would be you today, would you raise your hand? I see those hands. I see those hands. In just a few moments, I'm going to say a prayer. This is not a special prayer. I just want to say it's a guide that can maybe lead you through some words if you can't think of anything to say. 
It's not what saves you. Just as we were hearing ahead of time, you believing in Jesus and calling upon him is how you can be saved today. Dear Jesus, follow along with me. I know I am a sinner. I know that because of my sin, I deserve hell. I believe you are the Son of God, that you died in my place for my sins on the cross, and that you rose again on the third day. I accept your free gift of salvation. I know now where I'm going to spend eternity. Thank you, Jesus. If you just pray that prayer, would you look up at me? I want to let you know that today you just made the greatest decision of your life, yeah. your entire life. And I want to say that you just answered and accepted the greatest call you will ever receive, more than any call you're going to receive on the rest of your career here. You accepted the greatest call. Jesus says in the Bible, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, and you can never lose your salvation. It's a one-time decision, and nothing will ever change that. Everyone can go ahead, and you can open your eyes and look up here. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you all today. It was a privilege, as I was saying before. Love to get to know you. Uh, my card's going to be in the back as you're walking out. Has some contact info, whether it's a text or call and email. I love to uh, communicate with you, help you in any way that you might need it. And those of you that accepted that free gift of salvation today, that's just the beginning. I encourage you, share it with your family when you get home. <coughs> Maybe some of you have a second job. Share it with your coworkers. Share it with someone else that you know for sure hasn't accepted that free gift of salvation. Let that flame continue to burn inside of you. I'm going to turn it back over to you.